I'm Valerie Elliott here with Datathon Program Director, and I'm really excited to say that we've launched our competition yesterday. You probably all saw that. We are thrilled to host a workshop series for you over the course of the month to introduce you to the topic and the challenge and to help you help you through it. So today our workshop will be hosted by Kylie, Katerina, and Liana. They're all students at the University of San Francisco. I will say just for some housekeeping, please keep yourself muted while our presenters are speaking to avoid disruptions. If you have any questions throughout the workshop, I'll be monitoring the chat. So please put your questions in the chat and we will take them at the end of the workshop. We'll have some time for Q&A then. And then finally, I want to say this workshop is being recorded and it will be posted on YouTube and in our resource platform afterwards. So I'm going to turn it over to our presenters and let them introduce you to this year's challenge. Hello, I'm Kylie Kinstella. I'm a third year data science major at the University of San Francisco, and I am so excited to be helping WIDS with this global challenge. Hi, everyone. My name is Katerina. I'm a second year data science major, and I'm really excited this year to be an intern with Women in Data Science and help out with the data fund this year. Hi, everyone. I'm Leah. I'm a sophomore data science student at the University of San Francisco as well, and I'm also a Women in Data Science ambassador. I'm excited to work with you all today and participate in this workshop as well. All right, so let's jump right into this workshop. First, I'm going to go over the workshop goals so that you guys are ready and prepared for what you can expect in this next hour. We're going to go over the challenge task overview, as well as the timeline and general outline for this challenge. We're also going to show you guys the Kaggle page, which is going to be your one-stop shop for everything you need for this challenge. Um, that's going to be where you register, access data, and whatnot. Then we are going to get into some variable descriptions. We have some categorical variables we're going to describe, and then we're also going to get into functional connecto matrices. These are all variables that are going to affect your model that's going to predict your target variables in this challenge. But before we get into the workshop, we're going to introduce the organization that's putting on this datathon, which is Women in Data Science Worldwide, also known as WITS. WITS envisions a future in which women are fully integrated and represented in all areas of data science and share equally in decision making, economic prosperity, and opportunities. So jumping into the mission of WITS in particular, it is to change the field of data science across the globe by elevating, educating, and empowering women to achieve 30% representation of women in data science by 2030. Specifically, the goals of the 2025 Datathon includes the following. So the Datathon 2025 goals are lowering barriers to entry into data science, um, encourage students to hone their data science skills in subjects such as data wrangling, processing and preparing for machine learning along with fitting and testing a machine learning model, and we hope by the end of this challenge, you feel more con confident to enter the field of data science. And also, lastly, provide women a sense of belonging. So Datathon, this year Datathon is going to be hosted on Kaggle. And a typical Kaggle competition has less than 20% of female participants as female. However, last year, week's Datathon, 78% of participants were actually women. And this just highlights how much there's how much involvement of the female population there is in this competition there's going to be so and it's part as leah said of the mission of women data science also another notable thing is that 51 percent of the participants identify as beginners showcasing the inclusive net nature of this competition most of the participants are going to be beginners and most of them have no prior experience 62 percent of them last year have no prior experience neither in data science neither machine learning or any kind of like predictive analytics uh, competition. They never participate. This is the first one. So if this is the first kind of competition for you as well, don't worry. This is the right way to like start off and learn something. In fact, 73% of participants last year said that they gained new skills in data science. So this just highlights kind of like the knowledge and how much of a big 
opportunity this is to like learn new things in data science if you're interested. So the WIDS Datathon Challenge Overview. The WIDS Datathon was developed with Anne S. Bowers Women's Brain Health Initiative in collaboration with Cornell University and UC Santa Barbara. Datasets and support are provided by the Healthy Brain Network and the Signature Scientific Initiative of the Child Mind Institute and the Reproducible Brain Charts Project. To give you guys some background, neuropsychiatric disorders that occur in development like anxiety, depression, autism, and attention deficit, deficit hyperactivity disorder or ADHD often differ in how and to what extent they affect males and females. ADHD occurs in about 11% of adolescents with around 14% of boys and 8% of girls having a diagnosis. There is some evidence that girls with ADHD can go often go undiagnosed, as they tend to have more um, inattentive sy symptoms, which are harder to detect. Girls with ADHD who are undiagnosed will continue suffering from symptoms that burden their, their mental health and capacity to function. So all that background leads us to try to answer this question in this datathon. What brain activity patterns are associated with ADHD? Are they different between males and females, and if so, how? To work towards the answer to this question, participants will be tasked with building a multi-outcome model to predict both an individual sex and their ADHD diagnosis, using functional brain imaging data of adolescents and their sociodemographic emotions and parenting information. A multi-outcome model is, to design, is designed to predict multiple target variables simultaneously using a single machine learning model. And in this datathon, the target variables are the gender and whether or not the patient has ADHD. The outcome will be a one if the participant is a female and a zero if they are a male. Um, and the outcome will be a one if they have ADHD and a zero if they don't have ADHD. So if you guys notice, these are both classification questions. So you will build a multi-outcome model that predicts two classification questions. And all of our information can be found on our Kaggle page. And um, this is one of the most popular machine learning map platforms in the world. Users can share code, data, and ideas and collaborate on projects. So let me take you to this page. This launched yesterday, so you guys should have access to this Kaggle page. And when you guys open up the Kaggle page, the first thing that you will see is an overview. This is like a background information that I just talked about, and this is also where you will register your teams. Important team information is that your team can consist of one to four participants, but 50% of the team must identify as a woman. So that's where you will register your team. This is also where you can refresh on the challenge question and task, as well as how you will be evaluated and how we want you to submit your answers. So we have a sample submission here for you. And then on the bottom of this overview page has a bunch of resources. This is background information and more on why this is important. You might, guys might wanna check this out before you actually start completing the challenge. These are pretty short videos that contain a lot of information for you. And then the next most important page is this data tab. And this is where you can find all of the data that is needed to complete this challenge. Also some like data set folders information. So you guys know how to access all this as well as a data dictionary. This is very important for you guys to understand what our variables mean, um, other than like what we described today. And then on the side here, you will see all of the downloadable data frames that you guys need to complete this challenge, very easily downloadable um, right from here. And lastly, this is also going to be where you submit your prediction. And that's going to be before the end of the challenge. You're going to uh, submit your results with your team that is registered. Let me bring you back to this one. So to give you guys a little challenge timeline, as you guys know, the challenge launched yesterday, January 7th. So you guys can start working again. Like I said, all the data sets are available on Kaggle for you guys. And you have until April 27th to submit your teams. And then only three days later, April 30th, that is when you have to submit your results on Kaggle. So April 30th is when the challenge ends and April 27th is when you have till to register your teams.
And then around May 7th, you will get the results of the winners and whatnot. But when you are, submit your results, you will automatically show up on a scoreboard because Kaggle will automatically weight and grade your results. So next up, we're going to talk about the data set. So the data set is the thing that you're going to use to solve this challenge question. So the data set includes, as Kylie showed before, a training and a test folder. The training folder consists of three types of information about 1,200 plus subjects. Uh, I think in particular, in specific, it's one, one, 1,214 subjects. And basically, you're going to find about those uh, many subjects, you're going to find kind of like the targets, of course, the principal things. So whether they have ADHD or not, and their sex, whether female or male. And then they're gonna, you're going to find functional MRI connectable mat matrices, which I'm going to explain more about later. And then social demographic information about each patient. So and you're going to find it both quantitative and categorical metadata that Leah is going to explain more later. And then in this test folder is where you're going to test. So you're going to train the model on the training folder, and then you're going to test your model based on the test folder. And then the things you're going to, what you're going to submit is going to be the outcome that you get from the test folder. So for the test folder, of course, you're not going to have the targets. You're not going to have ADHD or the sex because those are the things you're trying, you're going to try to predict. But you're going to receive functional MRI connective matrices and social demographic information. So what are functional MRI connective matrices? So the name sounds really really scary, but it's not this too complicated. So fMRI is the resting state functional magnetic resonance imaging. So basically the, this fMRI measures brain activity using blood oxygen level dependent, also called bold contrast. So if brain region is really active, consume more oxygen. And then as of course the blood is what carries oxygen so of course blood is gonna blood flow is gonna increase in these regions because their oxygen is gonna break those brain regions are gonna need more oxygen and so fMRI detects the change in blood oxygen levels and based on this change infers narrow activity so basically the fMRI just measures how much blood flow goes and comes in the brain regions because the blood is carrying the oxygen when a brain region is active because they need energy and, of course, they need oxygen. Um, so what is instead the first part of the name, functional connectivity? So functional connectivity describes interactions between different brain regions. Originally, it's presented as a matrix, as you can see on the right picture, the picture in the right. So basically, the rows and columns represent brain regions, and you have a rows and columns. You have basically the same, the same names of the brain regions, and the cells are the correlations between activity in pair, pair regions. So basically... In this, in this case, you have you don't have numbers, but you have colors. So if it's red, there's more color, there's more like there's more activity between those two brain regions going on. If it's blue, there's less activity. And the matrix then it was then transformed into a data set, uh, which is what you guys are gonna receive the data set of this matrix, with each column representing the interaction between two brain regions. So if you have region one and region two, as you can see on the data set on the bottom i don't know if it's easy to read or not but basically it's like it describes the interaction between the zero uh, the zero region and the one region and then the second column is going to be between the one and the second between the region brain region one and brain region two and you're going to receive a dictionary about the brain regions as well if you're interested but it's uh, so what how can you interpret the interaction so if you find a positive value it means that the brain regions are more active together um instead if Negative values means that brain regions are less active together. All right, now we'll be talking about the metadata and the descriptions of our variables. So the metadata provides additional information about the individuals um, that will be valuable for enhancing model performance, understanding the context of the data, and informing feature selection. Um, to give an overview, the Healthy Brain Network, or HBN, is a community-based initiative of the Child Mind Institute, and HBN openly shares phenotypic and neuroimaging data to study mental health and learning disorders in the developing brain. So we will be working with two kinds or two categories of metadata, which are quantitative and qualitative or categorical types. For the quantitative data types, these were gathered using instruments or questionnaires, which require numerical answers, which go over a certain range. Um, so we have a total of 18 quantitative variables. We have demographic identifying variables, namely the laterality index or handedness. Um, we have color vision score, 
And we also have variables related to parenting, which are measured by the Alabama Parenting Questionnaire. If we can move on to the next slide. Yeah, so that's the Alabama Parenting Questionnaire. These variables are in particular relevant to the etiology or causes and treatment of child external externalizing problems. So that includes positive involvement of the parental figure, supervision or monitoring, use of positive discipline, consistency in the use of such discipline, and use of corporal punishment. And there are also variables related to emotions measured by the Strength and Difficulties Questionnaire. This is a behavioral, behavioral questionnaire that asks the caregiver if the participant has experienced a problem and the degree of chronicity, distress, social impairment, and burden to others. And lastly, there is a quantitative variable which indicates the age of the participant during the MRI scan. And this is under the MRI, MRI information, which we will also tackle more in the qualitative data types. So for the qualitative data types, these require categorical integers. First, we have the MRI information, which provides information such as the location where the MRI scan took place. And next, we have additional demographic information, such as the year of enrollment, phenotypic testing location, ethnicity, and race. And lastly, there are variables related to social status, which are measured by the Barrett Simplified Measure of Social Status. This measures specifically through parents' level of education and occupation. Occupation, sorry. You will use the metadata as stated by Kylie. You will use the data as a predictor for our target outcomes or information, namely the diagnosis of ADHD in the participant and also the sex of the participant. And the, this picture on the screen right now, this is like the gist of the categorical variables and the information that it provides. Um, I think this will be on Kaggle, I believe. So if you want another background of the variables that you're working with, please feel free to refer to this image as well. Yeah, and then before we conclude with this workshop, we wanted to share with you all the workshops or the next workshops that we will be having for the 2025 Datathon. The first or the second Datathon that we will be having will be on January 22, 2025. And in this workshop, we will be covering in-depth methods for the data set. This will be about the pre-processing and preparation of the data set. In this workshop, we will be going over encoding categorical variables, merging metadata and functional connecti connectivity matrix on indices, and not a number of values. Again, this will be on January 22. And then we also have a third workshop. This will be on the 5th of February. And this will be about building and evaluating a machine learning model. And so we'll be talking about building a multi-output model at the accuracy accuracy score and also explaining the F1 score as the metric for model evaluation. So yeah, these are two of the next workshops that we, we will be having and we hope that you can join us again. And if you have any questions, you can reach out to us in the WIDS Global Datathon Hub. So all, all of us are on the platform. So please feel free to chat with us if you have any questions.